everybody, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Again, it's the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Uh, keep your questions coming, Dan at the Clinical Trials Guru.com, Dan at the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Also, Dan Sphere on every social network. Someone asked me today if I'm still on Facebook. Yes, I'm on Facebook. I'm a page now. So it's Dan Sphere. It's not a profile, it's a page. Uh, it allows me to open up to more fans, and uh, I actually don't have. A personal Facebook page. I converted my profile to a page. We can talk about that later if you want to know why I did that. Uh, turns out, because I run a lot of Facebook dark posts, if I want to run ads, Facebook insisted that I create another profile. So I have one that has zero friends, zero pictures, nothing but my name and my login info so that I could manage all my pages because I manage my own page, Dance Farah. I manage different research clinics I'm affiliated with. I manage the Clinical Trials Guru fan page. I manage Keller Williams and Irvine real estate page. And I run ads for all these too. So anyways, keep your questions coming. Find me on all social networks. Today I have two questions and they're kind of related. Okay, but I'll go through one at a time. So the first one, they're both about software and if I know of different software solutions for two separate problems. So they're kind of related because the solutions are going to be surprisingly similar. Okay, So the first one's about scheduling patients. So this person know, at, is asking if I know of any good software out there that helps you keep track of patient visits. Um, this person is currently using Excel. So basically when a study participant screens, uh, they'll either screen fail or they'll have another visit where they'll be randomized. At this randomization visit, it actually projects all future visits for this study participant in this study. So if there's like 18 visits, it's going to project all 18 visits with dates. It's up to you to know what the protocol allows. So if they can't make it on a certain date, uh, are they allowed to come in a day earlier or a day later or two days earlier, two days later? Each protocol is different. I've seen some as strict as plus or minus one day. I've seen some as lenient as plus or minus seven days. It really depends on the study. There are so many studies out there. Um, but this person wants to know if there's any software out there. They're using Excel and they're saying they can see how that can, it allows room for error. Um, what I do, what I've been doing is using Google Calendar. And so we have like shared workspaces at our clinics where everyone has access to the calendar and we enter all the visits each coordinator for their visit the, the, their study that they're in charge of enters in Google Calendar and so just like that when they randomize they actually manually enter all the dates there so even if that patient's not necessarily gonna come in three months on that date you at least know that per protocol that's the date that patient needs to come then if the patient asks to reschedule, you go in there and manually change the date. Also, if the patient withdraws from the study before that date ever materializes, you go in there and delete that date. That's what I've been doing. I don't like Excel because your computer could crash. It's not saved in the cloud unless you email it to yourself. You could put it in Evernote, but Gmail already offers you that with the Google Calendar. Um, and another way I would do it is actually maybe have an Excel sheet as a backup and also have those physical calendars on your wall and keep it HIPAA compliant by just putting their initials and what visit they're in and each coordinator should have their own calendar but they should also be that data from that calendar think of it as a EDC right those visits should be entered in the uh, Google Calendar also, speaking of the EDC, that's a good way to track when study participant visits are supposed to be because the EDC will kind of tell you. It'll kind of map out each visit. So that's another way to do it. Whatever you choose to do, be consistent. The next question is pretty similar. Um, it's asking about good lead tracking software. So I think I answered this one before, but where do you put your leads so what a lead is, is this is for people who are interested in either getting more studies for their clinic or getting more study participants to join their studies. So someone who's potentially interested or 
a potential client is a lead, okay, and you have to follow up on those leads. So if it's a, for a new study, you know the project manager's name, you need to know that you have to follow up with him or her. What I do is I store them all in Evernote, and I also upload them to Intralinks Via, which is a cloud-based uh, application that allows you to keep these things and it's made just for clinical researchers that one you, you have to spend a little bit of money but I would go with Intralinks Via on that end to keep it stored in the cloud but Evernote does the same as far as something that just keeps alerting you as to when to contact the leads uh, we don't have anything like that in this industry uh, although I'm working with a team of developers right now so if I think that there's enough demand for something like this we can get it set up. We're currently working on our clinical trials slash Yelp project where study participants are going to be able to search for trials in their area but also look at reviews and ratings of individual study protocols and research clinics or PIs. So I'm actually working on that now. It's going to be coming out in a few months uh, but if I see enough demand for these kind of things like following up on leads. Um, I will create something like that for us researchers. I'm also in the real estate industry so there's a lot of lead management uh, software out there for that so you can look to that area but I wouldn't spend money on that. I would just constantly go through your Evernote um, and just pick up the phone or email and follow up that way. You, you can send alerts on your iPhone uh, but there's no real way to automate that so some things you can't automate and some things shouldn't be automated. So that's my two cents on that. Keep your questions coming, Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. And if you want something, like I said, I've got some developers working on things right now. If you're interested in having some kind of solution for your clinic or your research company, let me know if there's enough demand. I'll work on something, right? Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Keep your questions coming. Thanks.